Todd Crodo. Now sit back, relax, and here's Steve. You are watching Park TV. Welcome to Monadnock Tonight with your host, Steve Jackson. Coming to you live from the studios of the Park Theater in lovely downtown Jaffrey, New Hampshire. Join Steve and his guest today, Jared Mazzacci, producing artistic director of Andy's Playhouse. Now sit back, relax, and prepare yourself to be entertained. Here's Steve. Well, greetings, folks, and uh, hello, friends, and welcome to the Park Theater and Park TV's Knock tonight. It is Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. It is about 5 p.m. here on the uh, five minutes and five o'clock and one minute and 46. We're a little bit, a little tardy today here on the East Coast. This is show number 73. And it's, uh, what, 39 degrees here in Jaffrey and snow flurries, at least in downtown Jaffrey today. Very, uh, I guess, very New Hampshire. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully uh, they say we'll be getting warmer uh, in the days ahead. And I, yes, I am Steve Jackson. I'm the CEO of the Park Theater and your host. And we are so glad uh, for you to join us. Uh, we are broadcasting as we have for the past month or so from the new theater in the, right now the studio is the box office. Uh, but who knows where we'll be broadcasting eventually when we keep doing the shows when we're open. Uh, but uh, we are here. And uh, not only last week, you found out that we got our uh, marquee uh, installed, but today we had our poster cases installed. So uh, even though we don't have posters in them yet, be on the lookout. Uh, they will be there soon. Um, now, today we have a guest who returns for a second time to Manadnock tonight. And uh, it's going to be a very, uh, very special show and lots of things to talk about with our guest. But first, some news about the park. Uh, tonight, as you probably know, if you are uh, stay with us much, <laughs> is uh, Oscar night at the Park Theater. Uh, our Oscar talk panel discussion begins at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time tonight. Your host for this event is Mr. Ernest Thompson, Oscar winner for his uh, uh, first it was a play and then uh, he got the Oscar for adapting it. To, um, to film, and that is for On Golden Pond. So here's a quick uh, word from our good friend and our host tonight, Mr. Uh, Ernest Thompson. Ernest Thompson here, and friend, for many years I have been asked the essential question, does one's life change upon winning an Academy Award? And the answer is, envelope please, <clears throat> there's always a moment of suspense while the presenter fumbles opening the envelope. I think everyone comes down with a case of Butterfingers at that moment. And the answer is, no. yes. If you want to find out more about how my life changed and how the lives of other Oscar winners, including my dear friend Estelle Parsons and my buddy Russell Williams, the sound mixer who's won two Academy Awards and a panel of other experts and philosophers, tune in on Thursday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. to the Park Theater and you'll hear those stories and we'll talk about this year's nominees and how other lives are gonna change on the 25th Sunday evening when the Oscars are presented this year. See you at the Park Theater, streamed April 22nd, 7 p.m. So that's, uh, that's Ernest's promo, and here's an even quicker one from our good friend uh, of the park, uh, Miss Estelle Parsons. Well, hello, 
I'm Estelle Parsons, and thank you for tuning in to the Park Theater in Jaffrey, New Hampshire, on April 22nd for Oscar Talk. So that is tonight, and our other panelists are what Russell Williams uh, II. Russell uh, won uh, for Best Sound for the films Glory and Dances with Wolves. He will be here live, um, as well as Peg Alloy, who is a uh, Boston uh, member of the Boston Film Critics Society, writes for Ms. Magazine, for did write for the Boston Phoenix. Um, and Time Magazine, uh, she is a noted uh, film and TV critic. And if you, uh, if you follow RottenTomatoes.com, you can always read Peg on Rotten Tomatoes. She's one of the um, featured uh, critics on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and Larry Benequist. And Larry Benequist is a uh, professor emeritus in film studies from Keene State College, a very interesting guy, a filmmaker himself, uh, and uh, also a film restoration expert. So that's our panel. That will come. That comes on kind of right after this show. Uh, that's a paid show. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the park. It's ten dollars for uh, individuals, fifteen dollars for a household. All you got to do is go to parktheater.org, and it's right there in front, right at the top of the page. Uh, you just click on the Oscar sli uh, slide um, that's on that home page, or for those who like to do this, uh, you can do if you have if you like to do QR codes. If you put your uh, camera, your smartphone camera up to it right now, you'll go directly to our ticketing page. Uh, our friends at On the Stage who do the ticketing for our virtual events. Um, Next, just a uh, quickie on uh, May 1st, we're starting to announce this, uh, and it was in the, uh, the Ledger, a story about it was in the Ledger today. We are live streaming a classic silent comedy feature film from 1925 called The Freshman, and with Harold Lloyd. And Harold Lloyd is, again, one of those great, you know, there's only a, about a handful of them after Chaplin, of the great uh, comedians of the silent era. And this is a wonderfully funny film uh, about uh, a guy that doesn't fit in and how he tries to fit in. And, uh, and it, but the most interesting aspect probably of our presentation of this is, is this is something you can buy a ticket for live streamed because it's going to be uh, accompanied live by nationally, nationally acclaimed silent film son, soundtrack composer Andrew E. Simpson. And this will be coming live from Washington, D.C. It's our own production. Uh, but that's Saturday, May 1st at 7 p.m. Uh, so, again, if you go to the parktheater.org and you click on our front slides there, you'll, you'll see, I think it's slide number two for our virtual opportunities. Um, you'll be able to... Uh, uh, to get a ticket for that event on Saturday, May 1st at 7 p.m. And um, and I'm going to just I'm going to quickly just tell you this is that we have got a whole bunch. We have not made official announcements of it yet, but we are now going to be able to offer you streaming concerts from all over the United States and with wonderful artists that you many, you know, and a few you won't know. Uh, and they're coming up rapidly. Uh, in fact, uh, there's one that goes on about the same time as Harold Lloyd does. Um, and that is, uh, and here are some of the ones that are coming up. Uh, May 1st, we've got uh, the silent film. We've got Joan Osborne uh, coming from uh, the city winery in New York City. We've got Los Lobos doing their Cinco de Mayo show from Los Angeles. We've got Keb Mo, two different performances coming from the city winery. And Michael McDonald of the Doobie Brothers coming from West Coast Studio. Uh, and we also, that's not on this slide, we have Dionne Warwick, which will uh, be on Mother's Day, May 9th. So uh, lots, of, uh, lots of fun things uh, coming up. And we'll, uh, we'll be giving you information about how to buy your tickets to live streaming these events uh, at home. And uh, there it is. So we hope that you, uh, but for tonight, we hope that you join us uh, for the uh, Oscar talk show, because we think it's going to be uh, 
informative uh, and uh, a lot of smart, smart folks on the panel. And we'll have clips from the, the, the movies that are up for Best Picture and uh, a few other surprises. But let's get to today. And our guest for today was on our program in May of last year, almost been a year. He was on Monadnock Tonight number 16. And today we're at number 73. So we've had a few since then, but we are so glad he's back. He is the producing artistic director of Andy Summer Playhouse. He has a new virtual play of his own coming from LA's The Geffen Playhouse. Jared is an innovator and you, you just know, and when we were talking last year, this guy has got creative popcorn flowing all the time. And through the miracle of uh, our good friends at uh, Consolidated Fiber Optic, here is Jared Mazzacci. Hi, Jared. How are you? Hey, hey Steve. Good to see you again. I'm good. Good to see I'm you. Good. good to see you. So uh, there's no question, Jared, and I knew this, you know, in the early stages of things being shut down last year in May, which we thought would not be the early stages of this, but they, it was. But Jared had so many innovative ideas going on uh, for uh, Andy Summer Playhouse and, and other projects working on. And it's, it is not, uh, it clearly has, the pandemic has never slowed you down. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I went to school uh, for multimedia design and technology. And, um, you know, this is a moment that uh, is totally full of innovation, but also really necessary for my community of multimedia creators to help pave roads so that people's needs can be met. And, um, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. So just keep your ears open. And as people are naming the things that they need, there's a creative, uh, there's a creative solution to that. So it's been really, really exciting. I mean, this, you know, all things considered, this has been a really hard year, especially in the performance industry. Oh, yeah. um, so any, any offerings that I can give to the community and quite frankly, Andy's was the garden in which we were able to experiment because the mission of Andy's is that is to work eye to eye with um, young artists trying to figure out new solutions. So we took that whole summer and said, look, let's be the research platform for the country. And it really has, um, it's, it's, it's really paid off in dividends. So I'm really proud of the children. I'm really proud of our staff. I'm really proud of our board for sticking with it. Uh, risk is hard and scary. And uh, it, it, it is. needs, it, is. It, needs <laughs> it needs, and no one, everyone, you know, everyone kind of talks about, uh, oh, inventing is, you know, it's so exhilarating. It's really terrifying because you just don't know if it's going to work and you continuously right. put yourself out on limbs. Well, that's what Andy's does for 50 years. We don't know if the show will work. So we have ingrained in us a sense of trust to keep leaping. And um, I'm so grateful to be uh, a member of that community uh, during a time in which leaping and risk taking is survival, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and and a lot of people who talk about Jared and his accomplishments. Um, uh, but I have to say, today is a very special day for Jared because Jared is featured in a New York Times article in today's New York <laughs> Times. And I have to tell you to our to anyone subscribe subscribes to it, uh, search it out if you haven't read it already. Here it is. <laughs> creating a digital playground in theater's new landscape. Uh, a multimedia designer and director found his niche developing productions for virtual performances. And that's where it only begins. Congratulations, Jared. Thank that you. Is, it's uh, that is very special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't feel real. You know, I, I'm in the middle of a tech right now where like, you know, you're, you're just sweating bullets, whether, you know, the thing that you're working on is going to work. And all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up being like, Oh my God, what the heck is happening? And I was like, I'm the same person. I'm still scared, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and it's just, it's really beautiful. It's really exciting. It's really your exciting. phone will be blowing up for <laughs> days, months. Uh, that is, it's, it's a wonderful acknowledgement of the work uh, that you have uh, created and, um, and the way you approach work. And again, like you were just saying, in terms of how you approach 
an issue like the pandemic, but uh, it's it's wonderful and congratulations to get that type of recognition and honor from and from a respected arts uh, it's respected newspaper, but certainly respected in the arts and the theater world uh, immensely. Uh, yeah. But bravo, bravo. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Um, one thing, and we don't want to keep Jared too long today because he is in the middle of a, uh, of a show, <laughs> teching. But um, the thing that I had seen, uh, because I happen to get, uh, I'm on the Geffen Playhouse um email list and i i get this email one day and i said well, wait a minute wait a minute there's only one man with that name in the united states who's in the theater is it's got to be and of course it is and and to be doing a project and and certainly we're going to ask you a lot of questions about this but to do it at the Geff, you know do it in coordination as a producer of the of the geffen playhouse which for those who don't know that, know this, uh, well, obviously it's David Geffen, if you remember who he is, but if you don't know, uh, on the West Coast, this is, this is one of them <laughs> in terms of theater. It's a, it's a renowned uh, uh, professional theater on the West Coast. In fact, um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, no, we were dealing with La Jolla. There was a, there was a Christmas Carol production uh, that was streamed, but I think that was uh, produced by La Jolla. But Playhouse. But this is something very interesting that you're doing with Geffen. Um, and I did take a screen grab just to give everyone a flavor of the website at Geffen. And then I'm going to turn it over to you after we take a look at this uh, visually to give a sense of what's going on here. And uh, plus later I will give the, uh, the website address so you can buy tickets for the show. It begins uh, tomorrow and uh, ends in uh, ends in June fifth. Um, so, Jared, tell us how this came about and sure. what's it all about? Because I know it's it's very innovative in terms of when you buy a ticket, what happens. So, yeah. what's what's the story here? Well, it's awesome. You know, I uh, I did a show back in uh, October called Russian Troll Farm, which um, also got a lot of press in the Times and a lot of accolades for being one of the first native digital performances of of, um, of this time period. And uh, I, you know, my rep, my reps, my agents um, really started using that to to kind of push what I'm doing out there and attract um, different producers to the work that I was doing. And, um, you know, that I was actually at McDowell Colony in December when I got a call from my agent saying, hey, the Geffen uh, Playhouse wants to talk to you. They're, they're doing the Stay House series. And the Stay House series is uh, on the sixth of uh, ultimately seven during this time period in which the um, the show is online. The audience comes into Zoom and uh they are shipped a package and in that package are objects used in the performance it's audience participatory and um and kind of the sky's the limit of what the idea is and so uh i was talking with with my agents about um what kind of creative ideas might work within that structure and um i was in new hampshire i was in the woods in a very like sacred you know uh, uh acreage in 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 uh, the area. And uh, I guess, you know, with that, I started thinking about um, ghosts and, you know, hauntings. And, you know, my family uh, experienced uh, some, uh, a precarious situation up in uh, Northern New Hampshire uh, when they lived there before I was born. And uh, it's been a part of my childhood upbringing for those who are friends of mine in New Hampshire, you know, the story very well about the house. Uh, my mom and dad would tell it at my birthday parties at, you know, um, different events. And so I went to the Geffen and I said, look, uh, I'm really into ghost stories. I mean, Wilton with the blue lady and blood cemetery and Hollis, like I, it's been a part of new England and new England is super old. And so, um, so I was like, I, you know, what about ghost stories? And I kind of pitched them a bunch of ideas of like pranks and, and they were like, well, do you, you sound like 
you love ghost stories. I I do. I grew up with it. And they said, well, do you have any? And I was like, well, let let me tell you this kind of crazy story. And by the end of it, they were like, wait, what? (laughs) That's the thing. And I was like, well, you know, I'm interested in that, but it isn't mine. It's my family's. And um, I wasn't alive during that time. I'd have to talk to them about it. And there's some discomfort around it because it was really traumatizing for my my siblings of, of the things. And I won't get into it because hopefully you'll come to the show to hear all of it. But it's a series yeah. of four or five really significant events that ultimately led to their moving out of the house. And um, uh, authorities were called at times like it was it, there's documentation about everything that went down. So um so they were like, look, we're really interested in it. And at that point, they were like, you know, if we move forward, would you want an actor? And I was like, well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a director. I'm a designer. And uh, some, of, some of their staff were like, well, I have to say, when you told it, like when you talk about your family, when you talk, like it's very personal and authentic. And would you be interested in telling? And I was like, well... I used to act like, you know, if you're comfortable with that, let's do it, you know, like, let's, let's do it. And I would, I always wanted to be, and I was an Andy's kid being an actor. I I lived a life wanting to be an actor and then design and multimedia just started getting me opportunities. So I kind of drifted and how cool to come back to that. And, uh, and so, you know, then I had the fear of legitimacy of what the heck are these stories (laughs) are, should I source like facts, check this, like, you know, I don't want to just promote a, this kind of willy nilly story. So I went on Ancestry.com. I went, uh, I called the local town um, historians from that town. I got the ground plan. I got the history of the house. And lo and behold, there's a, a crazy history that aligns with why the things happened to my family. And so I went to the Geffen and said, guys, there's a whole history here. This is kind of a research project. And they're like, your excitement, keep going with that, keep going with it. So I just started to establish all of this history. And I feel better about that because it's not me exploiting just the stories of my family. Um, it's actually a history lesson about property and ownership and uh, and messing with that ownership long after you've passed away. And what is that? And I mean, those are the conversations we're having in America right now. And so it became kind of a really interesting thread. So that's the story. It's kind of a and like, how let far, me tell you. How far, is, and, yeah. how far does the history go back, Jared? Uh, the house was built in 1800 uh, by a person who was enlisted in the army during the Revolutionary War. And one family lived in that house all the way up until my family purchased it at an auction when it when it was sold at an auction. Uh, so it's a very singular, deep history mm-hmm. of uh, a family who owned it, built it, owned it for 173 years. And then my parents bought it uh, in the 70s. And so. is the ownership is current how's the status of the current ownership uh I, all i will say is that my family was the la- was the last family to live in that house <laughs> okay as well, as a full family living in the full house so it's yeah, still okay. it still is it still exists but um it is not owned by a singular uh person I so see. It's a, which is also very interesting as well wow so wow yeah this is, uh, it's interesting to be able to go back and get the history let alone of someone yeah. that lived there, but really uh, to get a history of a house, but yeah, you know, to, to well, go back and it's and a go back. It, yeah, it's also a bit of a love story to the state of New Hampshire too. So for everyone who's listening, like there's a lot of mention of New Hampshire in there. Uh, it's a town up north by uh, uh, um, by Lebanon, New Hampshire, by the you know White River Junction area. Um, and everything I say in the piece, I'm really proud to say is accurate. You can go online, you can find all of the stuff. And if you're interested in hauntings and history, help me out. I want to get to the bottom of it. And I think that that urgency and interest is also a part of what's making it really interesting for the audience. We've had a few test audiences already, so it's been cool to get feedback where they really feel like it's a part, they're a part of it, you know? Also so. sounds like a movie. What's that? Also sounds like a movie. Yeah, you know, it definitely does. It definitely does. And, uh, you know, and playing who knows through what the, the life Playhouse, you may be getting some calls on that to your to your agent as well. Uh, For sure. <laughs> it sounds fascinating. And um, and so because you, you really, to experience it correctly, you need to get the packet of information in the mail, correct? 
Yeah. Yep. So um, you receive a, a box that I um, I designed with my team of all of these different parts of the story. So you, mm-hmm. you, you're told not to open the box till the performance. And when you do, we go through it, we set up our space and you're sleuthing with me. And uh, it's not quite an escape room style thing. It is authentically like here's here's the family tree here's the ground plan of the house help me out what there are things here that don't quite make sense and uh and we work through it together so so i think it uses the zoom platform really interestingly um the feedback from our test audiences has been that you know they hate zoom they're bored by it they're exhausted by it and yet they find themselves like shivering and screaming in the middle of it and you know it's a i don't know it's cool yeah yeah um well, first of all, I just want to get, uh, if you want tickets, go to geffenplayhouse.org. And, and because, perfect. just really quickly as you go on, uh, most of the run is sold out. However, um, I, I we don't know the official nature of it, but there will be several weeks of an extension that is about to be announced. Um, because of really, really great ticket sales. So if you're concerned that there aren't tickets for the times that you are interested in, there will be uh, additional weeks coming up. And I assume these kind of tickets, it, because it's kind of a household price. You know, uh, the expectation is you're probably going to have, you know, at least a couple, if not more. What, what is yep. the ticket price? Uh, it's $65 total so per ticket. But that, uh, again, if you've got four people, that's yeah, great. Yeah, that's you know, I like, think of these things. I mean, you know, yeah. very few people are watching them. I mean, they are. There are some, you know, just like our thing tonight, it's uh, we have a price that's for an individual. It's a price for a group. And yeah. uh, and in our particular case, it's you're on your own <laughs> kind of, you know, best behavior that which way you'd like to pay for it. But, but I, I think most people know that, some of these things are uh, a little more expensive uh, online, but there's an expectation that it is a at least a couple, if not a family of four people yeah. or two couples that are watching it. And uh, so, uh, but it sounds like it's ingenious to be able to get this. Now, how long is it? I mean, if you get a confirmed uh, seat, how, what's, what's it, do you, does it, is it sent through priority mail to you? Is it sent, uh, there are different packages. Yeah, it, it, the package always remains the same. But the Ge- I mean, Geffen has been incredible with this. They'll if you know, I think there's a cutoff date of like two days before yeah. you can't purchase the ticket. Um, but they will pri- priority mail it if it is a rush order. Um, yeah. And uh, and that's a part of the price. I mean, you know, it's a really awesome opportunity to get together and experience something like this. I, I also one other thing to note is it is all Pacific time, and I am talking to them about respecting some of the East coast uh, time period. So right now nice. the earliest show is at 10 PM um, because it's yeah. a 7 PM go over there, but we are working at uh, part of the extension doing a couple of earlier ones. But I mean, there's midnight showings of this. Uh, I'll be performing it at midnight. Uh, it's it runtime is an hour. Um, so it's, it's a swift haunting. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there are midnight showings. It's actually oddly is attracting a lot of East coasters, which we're very excited about. So great, great. Yeah. Well, I, well, everybody, head over to geffenplayhouse.org and be on the lookout for the extension of the extended play of the show, uh, so that everybody has a chance uh, from uh, from around here to get a, a shot at watching, experiencing. It's not really watching; it's yeah. experiencing um, someone else's house. <laughs> uh, geffenplayhouse.org. Now, uh, Jared, I thought it'd be uh, just to give us a a little bit of taste before you leave of ideas going on for Andy's this summer. Totally, totally. Um, So we are, you know, we're 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 now at a point where we understand where the summer is headed um, simply because, you know, who knew what was happening over the course of the last several months? Um, the Digital Renaissance Project was super exciting last year. To uh, We did 322 projects uh, with 91 professional artists working with over 60 young artists in the area. Really awesome over 14 weeks. Um, we're going to still explore 
some digital interactivity with um, with kids because we had kids all over the country, all over the world working with artists all over the world. So um, what great exposure for local children in New Hampshire to be uh, working with kids everywhere. Um, so that's that's a part of it. We will do something in person. Um, we will it will be a pared down uh, summer. We won't we usually do three or four productions. We will absolutely do one really magnificent, awesome uh, uh, project in starting in mid July and then performances for an extended run in August. So we're about to be making that announcement. Um, and on top of that, uh, embedding a bunch of different workshop style things that uh, are all performance based. So everything that you could do could range from committing to five weeks like we usually do or doing a one week commitment or two weeks commitment. We're trying to figure out all those package deals because we know Families want to have a vacation if they can. They want to get away. They want to be with family now that we are able to. So we want to embrace that um, journey as well. So there's going to be multiple packages to get kids involved. Um, safety is a, a huge concern for us, yeah. and we're working to, to solidify all of those plans. But we will be doing something. It will be an extended run in August, uh, and, and it will be in person. And we're really excited by uh, those steps. So we've been actually... Um, uh, sending out surveys to families of like what makes you feel confident about sending your child to an in-person situation. We're being very cognizant of that, uh, and I'm happy to report everyone's really excited by by what we're um, what we're about to launch. So I'm excited to 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 do that. Yeah, we're we're you know, and even the idea itself um, is embracing the limitations and restrictions of what we have to do with um, with people inside the same space. And we're gonna make a piece about that. And I think that um, working on new work has always allowed Andes to develop uh, stories that can embrace the restrictions that we are set in. So, um, you know, last year we were laughing about, you know, it's six feet uh, social distance, you can't be together. And if you are together, uh, there's health related issues that uh, could lead to very severe conditions. Well, that sounds like Romeo and Juliet. You can't get together, right? So like trying to trying to be really creative about ways in which we can create tension, conflict, journey um, within the confines that, that we're in. We're not trying to remount another an already made show. We get to write whatever we need to make a really exciting piece. And um, you know, the kids at Andy's are just genius and I'm excited to get back in a room with them. Right. And, yeah. uh, and going back for a moment to your personal projects, what's in the works? Well, you know, this one, it's a, this one is a really big project with Geffen. Um, I have a mini commission at a theater in New York City called Vineyard Theater. Um, and that's going to be uh, mounting a piece in September. That is a deeply personal piece about the loss of my father and the loss of my grandfather. Um, uh, but using digital technology inside a car and doing a, a kind of journey, a live performance of a journey, um, of a drive, and audience get to join me on that. So um, that's really exciting. And uh, I started a company back in September called Virtual Design Collective, uh, Vidco for short. Uh, and our tagline is turning COVID around, Vidco, Virtual Design Collective. So um, so uh, the company, which is in the New York Times article too, is uh, uh, well over 20 artists that it's kind of an agency to help um, artists get work right now and stay creative. And so that's really kept us busy. We're opening a show at, uh, at BAM tonight, uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music. Um, and uh, I have four of our associates on that literally upstairs about to about to open it so um just keep them busy and staying staying you know staying alive and staying happy and inspired so those are the well, those are the personal things i can only you know with your with your schedule to thank you and everyone at the park theater and our audience to thank you for taking a few minutes out to uh to be able to give us an insight of uh what's happening especially with uh Number one, with what's happening starting tomorrow, someone else's house uh, and that project. But of course, with Andy Summer, Summer's uh, Playhouse, because everybody's always interested in that in our region. Um, and you've got other, you know, again, I, th I think it's really true. You've got that gift of creative popcorn that just <laughs> keeps, you know, just keeps coming. And uh, that's that's it's quite a gift. Well, uh, thank you, Steve. We, we thank you uh, as well for being with us and uh, 
best of luck uh, with the run of that show and with preparing for uh, Andy Summer Playhouse and preparing for the show for BAM. And you're a busy man. <laughs> well, thank you. I always make time for you guys here. I love, I love our state. I love our community. So any chance to share, share and all of that. I'm, I'm all, I'm all ears. So great to see you again, Steve. Great to see you, Jared. Yeah. Stay well. And we hope to see you soon. Sounds good. You will. All <laughs> right. Bye-bye now. Okay. Bye. Well, you know, Jared is, is such an interesting guy and, uh, and he's doing so many different things and, and, you know, he's taking issues like pandemic and turning them into opportunities and um, for his, his personal work, as well as for Andy's playhouse, summer playhouse. Uh, so that is always, always fun to talk to Jared. And as I say, if you really want to get to know the creativity of, of, of Jared, this in-depth uh, profile article interview, uh, in today's New York Times, uh, I'm sure you can search it online. Uh, and if you have happen to be one of those lucky people to get a paper copy of the newspaper, uh, it's in the C, uh, the third section, uh, arts area, the C, section C. You will be able to read that article with uh, actual newsprint, too. But it's certainly it's available online, so I highly recommend you take a peek at it. Uh, how about us? Uh, as we end, I just want a uh, couple things to remind you. Um, we have got next week. Let's see if I can find it. Um, this is our April 29th show of Manad Knock Tonight. We have two guests, and uh, one is uh, Veer Hill. Uh, he plays all sorts of music, reggae, pop. Uh, R&B blue, blues, you name it. Um, he ventured from St. Martin to the Dutch Caribbean Isle, uh, Island, uh, Curacao, then to Hampton, Virginia. He now lives in Providence. He's an incredible performer. He will be with us live um, next week. Also, Deborah, that isn't Deborah Shakespeare Thurber, but you might have, you might think it is, uh, but that certainly that is the bard, but Deborah Shakespeare Thurber, uh, the executive director of Project Shakespeare, will stop by to tell us some of the wonderful things that are happening with Project Shakespeare over the next several months and, uh, and happening uh, very soon uh, after uh, that show, as I believe the schedule is. So, yes, so tune in next week, Vera Hill and Deborah Shakespeare Thurber. Um, again, I wanted to, uh, say to you that, um, we hope you join us tonight. Uh, it's, uh, about an hour and a half from now. If you need to get a ticket, uh, all you have to do is go to the very simple park theater, theparktheater.org. Tickets are $10.00. Again, $10 for individual, $15 for a household. Uh, it's a fundraiser, and uh, you can see the uh, their donation possibilities as well. We ask you to consider that. Um, but it starts at 7. I was notified that I said 9 p.m., not in this time zone. No, it is 7 p.m. It begins at 7 p.m. tonight. Again, tickets ten start at $10.00. Uh, we have a great panel of guests, lots of fun things to see, to hear, and to be informed about. So pick up a quick ticket, very simple, uh, through our partner on the stage. Just go to theparktheater.org. It's the first thing you can click on when you uh, go to the website, and it'll take you right to the ticketing area, uh, ticketing website. And that, I believe, is what we call uh, a program today. And uh, as we finish up, I always like to remind people that uh, if uh, you have a question about our show or have ideas for our show, um, you can uh, give a call or you can email us or you can, if you'd like to sponsor, just uh, call us at 532-9300 or email us at parktv at theparktheater.org. 
And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, many of our guests uh, that we book on the show uh, come from suggestions from our fans, our audience. And so it's a great way. You know, we, we only know so many people, so it's always, it's always wonderful to get uh, information uh, about someone interesting, whether they are a performer, an actor, a performing group, um, author, you know, uh, anyone that makes a difference in our community and uh, communities. And so uh, as we end our show, we always like to remind folks uh, to be safe, be healthy, get your vaccination, be kind to everyone and be hopeful because we can do this. And that's a show. I'm Steve Jackson, your host. And again, thanks so much to Jared Mazzacci uh, for being our guest today on Manad Knock Tonight. We will hopefully see you at 7 p.m. Uh, tonight with Oscar Talk. Uh, but otherwise, we'll see you next week on Manad Knock Tonight. Thanks, everyone. Good night.